Hey folks, it's Laura with Rain Tree Nursery and today we are in a beautiful place. This is Zofia Pastor, a friend of mine for many years, but I've never actually been here. This place is gorgeous. Tell us, where are we? This is Paradise Farm, the headquarters to Farmer Frog. Mm -hmm. And we are in Woodenville, Woodenville, Washington, just uh, north of the Snohomish County line. Mm -hmm. This um, place is on the headwaters to Bear Creek. Uh, the forest right there around us is actually the home of Bear Creek. That's where it comes from. Oh, wow. And it is sacred land. Uh, the coastal Salish people have been here for uh, thousands of years from time immemorial. And um, many um, middens and uh, remnants of long houses have been found oh, in the wow. area. Yes. So uh, it's ceremonial ground. We um, are really lucky and have um, wonderful drumming circles and dances come and uh, um, various tribes come and sing to us too. Um, we'll um, see the grandmother cedar behind us and she is considered a sacred large cedar tree. Mm. Really old and magnificent. And um, we've been establishing this farm here, the modern part of it, for the last five years. But um, the farm is Centennial Farm. The older part actually is from the 1870s, mm. when a family from Wales homesteaded here and started um, doing dairy farming and logging and whatnot. So um, they um, turned the, the land over to Stormish County Parks, which is the conservation area. And it's 840 acres of forest. And um, five years ago, we little over that now, uh, we started working here and uh, cleaning it up, restoring it, working on preservation of both the farm and restoration of the forest. We work with wildlife there. Um, it's a very significant place in terms of black bear habitat. We do have also coyotes, cougars, all the different raptors too, but um, we are the largest black bear habitat west of the Cascade, right here ah. around the farm. So everything that we do has a demonstrational purpose, mm -hmm. and we grow a lot of perennials and a lot of fruit um, um, type of uh, foods, and we do this in harmony with wildlife. Yeah. So uh, we also use a lot of native plant material in our forest um, restoration work that is food source for the whole purpose of the demonstration projects out here is to teach people how they can successfully grow food and coexist with the natural ecosystem around them. Because without wildlife, we won't be able to have successful production of any kind. And um, we are part of that natural system. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. And as people forget that, you know, they think that you can exclude things, exclude the deer, exclude the raccoons, instead of thinking about how do you partner with those animals? How do you recognize that they're part of the system that I'm part of, and how do we work together in harmony and still each of us get what we need, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And, that's, and it's great to have a demonstration of that because we're so used to separating ourselves, we have to be reintroduced mm -hmm. to how that works. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's perfect. Yeah. And Within that, just like we have needs for food, for water, for fresh air, they have the same needs. Mm -hmm. They have needs for um, livable homes. It's very similar to the human um, requirements. So uh, the good news is that usually what is a really preferred den site for a bear is not exactly the place I would like to set my living room on. <laughs> so we really can Lucky. manage. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and if we figure that out, uh -huh. then we all can be pretty happy. Right. So, and truly, a bear is not going to be very happy about living room use either. <laughs> so, uh, you know, when you look around, for example, we have these really silly looking fences, and that's all part of our, our uh, deterrent practices. The fences? We use non-lethal deterrent. Ah, uh-huh. Nice. And uh, with the fence systems, there are so many requirements to it that it works, but the most basic is that, well, you want it to be sturdy. Mm -hmm. 
because black bears, you know, a couple hundred pounds, all muscle, even if they are not the largest black bear you've ever seen, if mm -hmm. they start leaning on stuff, you know, they, it has to be, it has to be sturdy. It has to be preferably no climb because they will try to climb it. Mm -hmm. And if you can climb it, they can climb it. Mm -hmm. uh, it also has to be see-through because the conflict comes usually from surprises. Ah. They are not interested in us. Now, one of the things that I've noticed in this particular spot on the farm is that there are a lot of flags. Can you tell me about that? Yes, each flag from different nations and the states in the U.S. Uh -huh. represent an actual place where Farmer Frog has either an active partnership with, a program going on, or we have a very significant team member from that area. So we have living connection with that nation or that state. So we don't have all the 50 states and we don't have all the countries. It's not a, you know, we feel good and we just display it. It has meaning. And mm -hmm. what we actually found, it's a other purpose too, but we really had a lot less trial by wildlife coming through since we have the flags up <laughs> because they always moving. <laughs> And they are really colorful. See, smart. <laughs> and Always so thinking. I can only recommend <laughs> flags as one of the best deterrents. Hey, it's really great. I like flags too. I think they're beautiful. <laughs> yeah. So obviously you have many lovely things going on here. I would love you to show us something that one of the, a project or a location that you really yeah, love. Let's go. All right. Let's do it. All right. I'm going to follow you. Let's go this way. All right. This here mm -hmm. is one of my favorite spots. We have a lot of little places that we broke the farm up into. And the purpose is to show people if this is what you have in front of a condominium, for example, these, these are all things you can grow there. Yes. And you can successfully produce some fruit, flowers, leaves, you know, you can have herbal trees. You can have um, just decorational flowers too, if you're into that, but mm -hmm. you can also have your vegetables and edible perennials. And it doesn't have to be big. And it also doesn't have to be high maintenance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can see you've got the wood chips here and uh, there's lavender for the pollinators. They are super happy. And there's daylilies, which of course the leaves, I mean, the, the petals are edible mm -hmm. and one of my favorite things. I love eat, daylily right? flowers. And you've got lemon balm for yeah. tea mm -hmm. and you've got aronia, mm -hmm. which is a cast iron plant mm -hmm. and sweet sicily for herbs. Yes. So, oh, and you've got a little plum. Mm -hmm. We have plums. Or a little apple. Uh, uh, quince. We have a quince here. Quince, and then yes. the plums. And, um, you know, this to me and you can even have your pots if yeah. you really are into pots mm -hmm. so um we have a couple other places where we are in the process of putting small water features in you can add so many elements and it doesn't have to be a big place and right. if this is really in front of your home put a bench here and just enjoy it exactly oh lovely so here we are in one of the hoop houses these are beautiful structures. They're so nice and tall. And like the first thing we see is citrus. Yes. And in the Pacific Northwest, mm -hmm. you know, nobody grows citrus here. This is gorgeous. This looks like, what is this? It's a lime. It's a lime. Yeah, <laughs> it's a lime. <laughs> Wonderful. Wow, and it's so yeah, happy. Yeah, you see all these thorns on there. That's really, to me, the, when, when we show this to kids and then they see the thorns, the reverence on their faces you can see that now they value the lime they pick up at the store oh, wow. because someone had to because i tell them imagine going in and picking it and not getting hurt yeah oh that makes sense because you have a lot of kids who come through here mm -hmm. you have a lot of children yes. bus loads of classrooms yes. that come yes. as part of the teaching mandate yeah. that you yeah that we, you we do we serve a here. lot of schools yeah wow fascinating yeah. yeah a lot of schools so you know um we have some small fig trees that are um, planted in here yes, as well. Uh -huh. uh, you can see a few of the pomegranates. And um, we have tomatoes in here uh, in pots, but that changes, you know, season to season and year to year as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. And the reason simple for our pots here, someday this house will be aquaponics and oh. um, 
I don't want to have the limitation on that construction because, you know. And having to pull something exactly. out of the ground that's gotten really well established. Now this, this, this is, is a pomegranate, this right? Is the, yeah, this is one of the small pomegranates. And nice. these are actually um, really fabulous because uh, the fruit is very small but really tasty. Mm. And they so, have beautiful flowers, oh, don't yes. they? Like bright orange. You know what? They And they almost look like wax. I always wonder because they just... I, I'm one of the textual people and I have to walk up and actually touch it every year. It's like, it's real. It's not a plastic flower. It's real. Wow. And then, um, and then the fig finally is yes. taking, uh, you know, off. Um, I always say that things take a few years, right? So the first mm -hmm. year they will sleep, the second year they creep and the third year they will leap. And so here we are with our baby fig. And, nice. um, Unfortunately, the heat, you know, I mean, we had that heat wave and you can see that a lot yep. of things just really struggled. But, um, you know, we have some more. That's an of, olive, oh, right? Yeah, that, that's one of, the, one of the little olives. Wow. And it's not going to give us any big crop. But if you actually try to do this at home, this works mm -hmm. because you will be, you know, harvesting enough for a family. And for our purposes, back to the schools, uh -huh. it's showing people this is what it looks like. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, and this is the perfect example of when you plant many things, a few things can fail. It mm -hmm. gets too hot for yep. your shard. Okay, that bolts. But you still, your tomatoes are super happy. They are super and happy. And your figs exactly. are super happy. And so by yes. having a polycultural, lots exactly. of things going and, all at yeah. once, you're going to have some failures for sure, but you're also yeah. going to have some well, successes. And now I figured I'm going to have my own radish seeds from here because, you know, when we have hundred plus degrees here, you know, yeah. <laughs> we'll just, we'll make that happen. So here we go again, one of the Another beautiful pomegranate. Yeah, yes. yeah, more pomegranate there. And, you know, I told you this earlier that we are not crazy about pulling weeds just, you know, to pull weeds. Mm -hmm. To me, having solid ground cover and keeping moisture in the ground is very important. Mm -hmm. And we uh, know that when we weed everything and it's just really tidy and it's only a plant here and a plant there, that's not good for your soil. Yep. And that's harder to maintain when it comes to watering. And we do have a water system, but we're running on a well, and so we are very conservative. You know, these mm -hmm. are here not because they go all day, but it's because I don't have to walk hundreds of feet every single day when I do have to turn it on. Sure. But if we do like three times, maybe a week on those really hot days, otherwise it's usually a couple times a week when yeah. we water. And, um, and things are, you know, keeping each other company and they're keeping each other moist. See, like this, this mm -hmm. is a weed. This is a weed. Here. You can actually eat I know. It it's See, delicious. I yes. love this. I know. Uh -huh. And not only does it help keep the soil moist because it shades uh -huh. the soil, it actually is better than spinach, I think. Yes. I like to eat it and raw. And it doesn't bolt. And it doesn't bolt. Yes. And if I'm, you know, yes. if things are getting really crowded mm -hmm. and I'm starting to have problems with airflow, I can just cut it down and lay it down on the soil and it becomes yeah. a green mulch. And it's really nice. And, mm -hmm. you know, the other thing too is we have a lot of livestock. And so when we do end up pulling something, mm -hmm. we don't just toss it, it becomes food. Yes. And then we eat it as eggs. <laughs> <laughs> or as rabbit. Or... Yeah, or a rabbit. Yes, exactly. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. Very nice. Yeah. So uh, that's really uh, following the natural system. Mm -hmm. Now these guys will be ready to harvest very soon. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, you know, seed prices are going up, right? So everything is. And good if you and can save counts. your own seeds, then you're yep. growing things that you know exactly. do well here, mm -hmm. which is priceless. Exactly, and so we are doing the same thing with our with our beets here. Mm -hmm. So beets mm -hmm. and, and radishes. radishes, and then uh, we mm -hmm. did pull our um, greens out of here this last week because uh, we actually used it up. A lot of the stuff that grows here goes out to food banks and to you know small community groups. Mm -hmm. And um, all of our boxes out there too got harvested a lot of the greens last week. Mm -hmm. And so we pulled those out. And um, in the next couple of weeks, this house will get revamped because the seeds are coming out. Right. And then we will be planting for our fall. Fall crops, mm -hmm. exactly. Nice. Mm -hmm. All right, what else can we see? Let's go. All right. So I know what this is. This is a food forest, yes? Yes. Awesome. And how old are these trees? Three years old. Three years old. Yeah, we picked them up from you guys in um, the early 2019. So it's the third year. 
So they are not actually for three years yet. It's their third year. So they're going they did into their, their sleep, third. They did their creep. Now we are leaping. Wow! And you really can't see it. Ah, this is now. This looks like a peach. Mm -hmm. These are gore These are miniature peaches, aren't they? Yes, and um, do really well even without staking. Which you know, wow. I actually really enjoy the f most of these trees that are in here because it's such a tight space. Are miniature and semi dwarf. Mm -hmm and they are not staked and they are standing really just fine. Mm. So um, I really appreciate that about their root structure and we get wind out here, so. Right, because even our miniature trees, like the miniature peaches, are on our standard Lavelle rootstock. So they're anchored really nicely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And even in the smallest space, you can have a beautiful you can peach have, tree. You know, this would be fine even, even in a, sizable but a pot if you had to grow it in a, on a yes. patio or something right you know? mm -hmm. yeah. yeah yeah now will you show me the rest yes oh this little gate is so cute <laughs> and then you'll walk under the trees here in a minute we have the I have potatoes here and those are very special. Yes. So, Ozette, these little um, ground hugging um, potatoes, they are a fingerling and um, they are native to North America and they are native to our area. They are the macaw potatoes. Yes. And uh, they were discovered in the eight, early 1980s by um, botanists. But they've been in um, the ground and in the forest growing and feeding the macaw people for thousands, actually hundreds of years mm -hmm. because they, they, um, they were brought up here in um, the 1600-ish time frame and, um, and then the macaw started um, cultivating it and letting it be a forest potato. And so it, uh, it's something that really acclimated to the northwest the one weak spot is the mosaic virus so we really have to be very careful about that but um they are so beautiful and so durable they are not the typical potato we tried growing them in potato soil no they want the forest so in your food forest uh -huh. you have some things that really are the best plants to grow between your trees and shrubs. And Ozette potato is one. Mm. And then there are some of the others that um, you carry too, Oka mm -hmm. and the various root crops from Peru that are perennial. Yes, Yacon. Yeah, Yacon. And, and Mashua. Yeah, those mm -hmm. are wonderful. And um, they love that mulch underneath, uh, you know, the trees. Uh, asparagus is great. And you really can grow asparagus with the potatoes and all these root crops together. It's, it's nice to have them together mm -hmm. like that. So, um, and then we also let things just um, self-seed and come back year after year. So in a food forest, we really need all those different components. Mm -hmm. And um, not all perennials are perennials. Some are self-seeding annuals. But the idea is that you don't have to worry about them. They'll well, take care. Yeah, and you have the idea of layers, just like mm -hmm. nature has yeah. tubers in the ground and ground covers and vines and bushes and trees. Then we mimic that in a mm -hmm. food forest yeah. by having the ozette potato in the ground. And we have some of the herbs that scramble along the, the shade loving herbs that scramble along the surface. We have the bushes yeah. like currant and mm -hmm. gooseberry and jostaberry yeah. and blueberry yes. and then we have the trees the plums and mm -hmm. things and then the you know if you oh, have some uh, yeah. vines, vines to throw in there exactly. that reseed when mm -hmm. they drop their seeds that is the essence of a food forest that is that Nicely is and done. they will help each other they will protect one another you know because the trees will cast some nice needed shade in the hottest times of the year mm -hmm. and at the same time the ground is kept moist by all the smaller things around the tree so they have you know better yeah mo better moisture and it's i as a human being am drawn to a nice food forest in the summer too mm -hmm. to do a little bit of harvest but also to enjoy the shade of the trees as well yes it's being part of that circle yeah. yeah so there was something else that was interesting over here by the food forest can we look at this yes all right yeah let's go all right
Okay, now you said you were going to show me a garden. What, what kind of garden is this? It's a sound garden. A sound yes. garden? Yes. Okay. So Tell me about that. We, well, we created a hobo culture first off. Uh huh. And um, made it into a circle that is hugging a learning space. Okay, and the hugel culture is this mound That's here the on mound. the edge. You see some of the logs there, and then um, it's all covered up with lots of wood chips. And uh, we finally have a lot of the berries on it growing. Nice. We planted walnut trees, lots of raspberries. You see those growing mm -hmm. as well. And uh, over time, I mean, you can really visualize it. Over time, it's going to be a nice canopy wall here, mm -hmm. and um, full, you know, full of yummy things for kids. Because right. again, our audience is kids of all ages. So um, these are the things that make sand all here on this wall. Um, you know, we are just coming out of the pandemic, so these normally are in use. And uh, we're going back to summer camp next week. Nice. So it's happening. Ah. And um, we have really big Lego blocks. And yeah. And kids can learn about gravity and the physics and the different structural stability through that. Mm. And um, then they start playing. Oh. Oh my goodness. And then we have playing sticks too that they can use and reach higher up because everything makes a unique sound. Oh, fun. And then we don't tell them what to do. Let them discover it themselves. And what we often find is that we have our drum area and this wall and they start playing. And before you know it, they are paying attention to the other and start harmonizing. And now you actually have and then sound experience. Oh my goodness. Oh, it just yeah. gives me chills to think yeah, about that. It's, it's really fun. And <laughs> it's one of the things that I just can't wait. Always, you know, when camp comes, I look at them and I'm thinking, I wonder what you're going to play when we get to that. <laughs> what a treat. So to have a lovely space that is kind of enclosed mm -hmm. because of the mm -hmm. cultures that you've built that will continue to get more and more enclosed over yeah. time. Oh, now I get to start thinking like, I wonder how the sound is going to change over time mm -hmm. too mm -hmm. as we start to have a canopy yep. and it gets... Yeah. softer yeah. oh yeah. and fun. during the seasons <laughs> right because we're gonna have a lot of deciduous things and so you'll have different seasonal you know experiences and um it's also a very special structure because um one of our sons learned how to do carpentry on this so oh. uh, you know it was so fun i needed this done and he wanted to do carpentry, and I said, well, you know how to use the basic tools, so why don't we do this? Yeah. And then, you know, this is what ended up happening. And, you know, he, he did pretty good. <laughs> See, I mean, the, there's that old phrase, yeah. life happens mm -hmm. in a garden. Mm -hmm. What a yeah. perfect example yeah. of that, what's yeah. going on here. Oh, my gosh, I just love that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, let's see something else. Yeah. All right, okay. let's go. In the poultry village, it's a really fun experience to see all of the different coops. And uh, we call this space a village because of the circular shape of the structures and uh, how every bird actually lives in those coops. They know where they live. And at the end of the day, they go into their own coops and we can go down there. Our team closes them in and then in the morning, they let them out. And um, they keep to the same house, uh, quote-unquote, pretty well. Uh, we have ducks and uh, guinea fowl, all kinds of um, chicken breeds, and uh, turkeys in that area. Our geese are in another field. And um, they get along really well. So it's a really cute experience. Sometimes what we get is uh, mama birds will collect eggs but they're not necessarily collecting the right species. So we're going to have, for example, a mama turkey hatching baby ducklings and baby guineas. And um, mama hen is sitting on turkey babies. So those things happen because of the 
you know, interaction how they are all in one space. Oh, and here we have a beautiful western red cedar, one of the foundational tree species of this bioregion, and a tree that was certainly sacred to the native people here. What a treat to have her kind of watching over everything. Yes, um, she's really, really special. Her name is Grandmother Cedar, and uh, she's one of our trusted advisors, so uh, we often consult with her. And um, the Coastal Salish and Native um, Tribal member um, team members and our board of directors, they actually uh, hold ceremonies uh, here with her. Uh, on December 12th, uh, we have the celebration of sea bears. So she actually has her own day when we um, make a special effort to thank her for all of her work during the year. And um, she's um, really a, an anchor for all of us here. Um, we, we wouldn't be where we are without her. There is a, a, a resiliency in her since the site was blocked twice, um, you know, in the, from 1870s until the early 1900s, so in that 40, 50 years. And um, she was kept standing. So while that is just like, oh yeah, how lucky, at the same time that comes with a lot of wounds. So we know she experienced a lot of trauma losing her family. And um, she's um, able to work through that. And we can all feel her love and generosity. Mm. So um, the pain was transmuted into wisdom. And, um, and we, we are all grateful for that. We, um, you know, just in awe. Uh, I, I don't really have a lot of words other than, uh, you know, when there is a big question that we are at a fork and we need to make decisions, it's always like, well, let's go talk to Grandmother Cedar and see what, what is the appropriate next step. Well, now here's a lovely space. I think I heard you call this the food court. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Beats the hell out of any mall I've ever been into. <laughs> what a great spot. And this is a classroom, a teaching spot. Yeah, yeah? it, is. it nice. is a teaching spot. And we love it because we can also break it up to four smaller spaces, depending on what's mm. going on for the students. And uh, we have our cob oven and the barbecue and all of that in the area. Yeah. And um, these raised boxes are uh, growing various foods throughout the year. Mm -hmm. And um, here we have the three sisters. Oh, yes. Corn, beans and squash, there right? We have it. Yeah. And uh, they are going to support each other. You can see that they are looking really nice, even with the heat. These guys really love that hot. And um, I'm excited to see how tall they are actually because, uh, you know, it's um, such a small batch of corn mm -hmm. that if they are doing this good, it's a good, it's a good achievement. Right. Yeah. And you planted the corn significantly before you planted the beans, right? Yes. Because corn has to be tall enough so that the beans... The bean, the bean can start growing up on it. And then, uh, you know, the cucumbers, they took a long time to actually get going this year because it was a very strange spring. Yes. But, um, but here we are. Mm -hmm. And, you know, now with the warming temperatures, they are definitely happy. And, you know, in the raised beds around us too, we did have to pull some things that burned, but the rest of it is, is there and the, the heat lovers are just doing fine. And this, this is such a beautiful example of community. You know, community yes. in the plant kingdom, mm -hmm. and it and it reminds me of the work that you folks have started doing within the pandemic, the community yeah. building work that you've been doing yeah. to bring food to people that wouldn't wouldn't have had it. Will you share with our folks what you've yeah, been doing? It's um, amazing. It's yeah, really amazing. Thank you for for asking. Yes. So, in the March of 2020. Our schools went away, our camps went away, our restaurant sales and everything shut down. And and was it frightening? Was it scary? Yes, it was. It, and, and 
and as it went away it was very 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 scary yeah. and we also had a lot of time so we started finishing building on the farm different construction projects and then we got a call from one of our elderly volunteers who asked would we have any way to get some fresh produce to them because they were in total isolation oh man and we said sure so we packed up a bunch of, st of stuff into a basket and we said here you go we'll be back next week so next thing you know she lives nearby other uh, seniors that she said would you mind bringing like uh, five baskets because i have all these neighbors who can't leave home so that's how it started and then we started delivering to the door of a lot of people who were uh, in isolation for various reasons and um ended up um going week and week and you know once a week in may um one of our neighbors asked if uh, we would have extra container extra boxes these were the boxes extra crates and we did and they said they would take it to bring potatoes back from otello because the farmers were tilling them in and that's eastern washington that's eastern washington which is a huge yes. food growing exactly. region exactly and, right? and so they couldn't sell it because the restaurants were going you know to shut down the hotels were not running the cruise ships were not running so the schools were not running offices weren't operating and so they didn't have anywhere to go with the food and we said sure take the crates and bring it you know whenever you don't need it anymore and they said but what if we bring it back and it has potatoes would you be able to distribute and we said absolutely because you know we have connections and we've been doing not to this scale but we were supporting food banks and, and schools prior so that went really quickly and then um that started repeating and uh, the convoys went every week and before you know it um as of uh, june this year so it's at this point now uh 15 months we moved over 100 and million pounds of food. 100 million pounds? 100 and, uh, yeah, we, over 100 million pounds of what? food. What? And uh, we also moved supplies and PP to people, hygiene items. And um, we ended up servicing uh, Americans in 36 states, over 3 million people. 3 million people mm -hmm. in 15 months? Yes. That's, wow. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. that just is <laughs> extraordinary yeah. that you had, um, well, that you had the organization, that you had the infrastructure, but that you had the will and the willingness to do that, to, uh, you know, flip on a dime and just start a totally different direction because yeah. people needed you know, to have it. I think it's just like with plants, too. Um, you grow where the seed is planted, right? They grow there. So mm -hmm. you grow where you're planted. If you transplant it, you grow again, and then um, you just go with it. You know, if the light is shining from this way, then that's where you're going to grow. And if it changes on you, then that's where you're going to grow. And that's, I think, what we did, sort of like mimicking that natural system, looking back. And, um, you know, we didn't set out that we're going to feed 1% of the nation or that we are going to move mountains of food, literally. But... It just happened day after day and week after week and before you know it you're there and so it's just it's just really we kept looking back and said oh wow look at that and then you start adding everything up because we record everything we know where every pound went and then um you add it all up and it's like oh wow that's a lot <laughs> That is a lot. Yeah. And it gives you a, a wonderful perspective as somebody that's not in the food distribution business mm -hmm. about, I mean, you and I were talking before we started filming and you're now able to say, well, I can see where there's a hole here and where there's a crack here <clears throat> and where people and organizations need to meet here. So you have this beautiful new perspective, fresh eyes mm -hmm. that you can bring to yeah making the system a little bit more resilient yeah we are we are hoping um again you know we can't help ourselves so we relate back to the natural systems whenever we plan new things and what we find is that one tree should not be the only fruit supplier for an entire region right you have lots of those trees and the tree if it's the one tree it will grow seeds and then it will get spread out so that a lot of trees can do the work 
So um, we are now working on establishing a hunger relief hub that is designed for serving smaller immediate community and it's affordable and it's duplicable. It does not require complicated warehousing because um, we don't have it. So if we can run it, then it can be pretty easy setting up other places. We are getting ready to teach folks how to do this. And ultimately the idea is that this similar system can be customized to fit whatever the community needs and wants, but it can be everywhere. And that's how the resiliency is built in to our nation at that point, because really it's not, it's not a good thing that um, small or large organizations, but individual organizations have to take care of everybody. Um, and I think also the individual community needs disappear and lo get lost in the translation mm -hmm. when uh, we centralize everything so much. Mm -hmm. So um, local solutions are better fitting for the people who they are serving. And, um, and that's where we are you know, heading. So I'm excited about it. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> and it puts me in mind of the fact that you and your husband are, are not native to the U.S. Yeah. You came from Hungary, yeah. yes? Yeah. And so you can see our country with fresh eyes mm -hmm. in ways that maybe folks that are, I've been here yeah. all my life, I can't. And you have the will and the grace and the skill to say, oh, there's something that can work better. And let's just tweak this a little bit here. <laughs> I so appreciate thank that you. about you. What yeah, a gift. Thank you. Thank you yeah, so much. Yeah, but you know, it really does take all of us. Like we are partnered with 700 organizations. So <laughs> we didn't just move 100 billion pounds. That's a lot of people doing a lot of work together. A lot together. of work together. Yes. We are coordinating. We are, you know, making connections. We are helping. Yes, but it takes all of us, you know? Absolutely. What a treat. Oh, my brain and my heart is so Thank full. Yeah. Thank you so much welcome. for welcoming us into your place, yeah. uh, showing us how you do it. And uh, what a treat. It's yeah. been a real treat. So, so glad to have you. Thank you. <sighs> yeah. yeah. All right. Well, there you have it. It's Laura with Rain Tree Nursery, another amazing farm tour with Zofia Pastor and Farmer Frog yeah. uh, at Paradise you. Farm. Yeah. Join us next time. Thanks. <laughs>